So we've owned the LS MT573 for a year. We're gonna talk about that in this video, so stick with us. So the LS MT573, we've owned it about a year now and we've done a lot with it. And I thought I'd take a few moments out to kind of talk about that, what we've done with it and how the tractor has performed. Uh, I think we got to go back to the very beginning, though. We bought this tractor about a year ago, October or somewhere in that neighborhood. I don't really remember exactly what month we bought it in. It might have been it might have been September, but still, we've owned it about a year. And between that time and now, we've done a lot of stuff with this tractor. And I want to show you and talk about a lot of things that we've done with it. So I, what I did is I brought in a 13 shank chisel plow that I have. I cut that 13 shank chisel plow down to seven shanks. Once I cut that thing down to seven shanks, I moved, uh, I moved the three point hitch over and we hooked it behind that LSMT 573 and I chisel plowed with it. Now it did a great job. It had no issues running the chisel plow. I was able in this property, this land that I was chisel plowing also keep in mind had been during that time had we were, or, and we still are is been in a severe drought. So the dirt was extremely hard as it was packed. It was hard packed. Uh, it is a black clay soil and it is, it is really hard to plow. So uh, and it had never been plowed before. And so we got it out there and I used this tractor to do all of that. Now, <clears throat> moving forward uh, beyond that, once I finished chisel plowing this property, I also went ahead and, and uh, we went ahead and planted it. Now, I just used a cedar. To plant it with is a broadcast cedar. It's not hard on a tractor at all. And, but it's still, it's still part of using the tractor. And I, I just want to bring that out. So we seeded with it, we fertilized with it. We did all this with this tractor. After we finished some of that, I decided that I'm going to go out and, and do a little bit of uh, subsoiling or ripping with it. Now, the area I ripped, the area I was ripping with this tractor, keep in mind, uh, there's a lot of mesquite root. So in the very beginning, when I started doing this ripping and ripping these mesquite roots out of the ground, we weren't dropping it down deep because of the mesquite roots. And I think it's important to say, because there's some people that might say, well, you are not dropping it very deep, but I'm catching roots. And so I, if I drop it too deep, I'm, I'm not going to go anywhere. So we were easing into this. We were dropping it in. We were grabbing roots and we were pulling them out of the ground. That's what we were doing. And we ripped that place up, that little bit of property up really well. And guess what? I don't have hardly any mesquites in there at the moment. There are some growing, but nowhere near what it was. But the tractor took care of that bra that very well. We started off with two shanks, and then I moved to three shanks. And once I moved to three shanks, it still did not have any issues. Now, remember, we've already broke the land up a little bit because we had been using two shanks. But by the time I started dro dropping three shanks into it, it grunted a little bit, but it still was able to do it. After we ripped... Uh, the roots on this area with this tractor i decided to with the three shanks i decided you know what i'm going to subsoil <clears throat> and I, all i'm going to do is i'm going to take it into some raw land that's never been plowed again and i am going to drop that that plow into the ground and subsoil with it i did i dropped it between about 15 to 18 inches and it, it varies okay so it's between 15 and 18 inches and i started pulling that through some property that has never been plowed and keep in mind, it still did have some roots in it, but nowhere near what the property, the first property had. Now, it had no issues. I did have to use four-wheel drive, both ripping and, and subsoiling. Uh, otherwise, I just lose traction uh, because it's just not, the tractor's not heavy enough and it's not big enough to be running three shanks at that depth. Uh, and I know that, but this is part of it. This is stuff that I still have to get done. And so we wanted you to see it, and we did it, and we put the tractor to work. Now, I've, I've done, since that point, we have uh, done other, many other things with it, such as we recently, uh, just a few months ago, we had about 100, about 200 and, about 200 and something loads of 12-yard dump trucks come in and drop a bunch of field dirt in. They had a bunch of field dirt they were getting rid of. It's free. 
we had them bring it in. We dropped it into some low areas where we have some, some creeks and stuff that run through our property. And we had them start dropping that dirt in there. Well, we used that tractor to spread all of this dirt. There's a lot of dirt too, by the way. And I did have some help. Um, after a while, it, it, it was getting overwhelming. They're running several trucks in at the time and I couldn't keep up. So my brother came over with his 5711, Massey Ferguson 5711, and he helped me out. But we got that done. And just another, another job that the LSMT 573 was able to help us uh, accomplish the things that we need to accomplish. As we continue the work that we did with this tractor, uh, after we finished moving dirt, I started clearing some fence line. And when I was clearing the fence line, I was using a grapple and the tractor had no issues at all running the grapple. We were uh, taking trees out and, and, and uh, mesquite trees and clearing the fence line out. And, the, and, it, and it worked flawlessly doing that as well. It, we had no issues uh, picking up any of the logs that we needed to pick up. The loader worked fine. We had no issues there. Uh, we were able to pull and move things around and, and so forth. Now, we'll tell you, I've talked about this before. I don't have ballast in the back of my tire, in, in my, the back tires on my tractor. I don't have ballast in them. I need ballast in them, okay? It would be a lot safer if I had ballast in them, and I admit that. But uh, right now, we don't have ballast in the tires, and we still do not have ballast in the tires. And as hay season approached, I started using the tractor for all the purposes of processing and cutting and baling and, and picking up the hay. And so that includes, we put the 488 cutter behind it. We started cutting with the 488 cutter, uh, the New Holland cutter. It did fine, had no issues cut, you know, running that cutter. Uh, and I didn't expect that it would, but the cutter started giving me problems. And I finally gave up on that cutter and I moved over to, I found, I went out and bought and found a, a Frontier DM 5060. And I put that on there. Now that is a, it's a, it's a brand of John Deere. John Deere has that cutter made for them. And there's some video on that cutter. If you want to see it, uh, take some, take a moment out and go watch that. Uh, there's a couple of videos on that. The, 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 the tractor had no issues. It, it used the cutter just fine. Again, I didn't think it would have any issues. Now I don't own a double rake, but I do own a single rake. And for now, I can't afford a double rake, so I'm going to continue to use a single rake for now. And I used the rake behind it. We raked the hay that we had just cut. No issues. Again, I didn't think that the LS tractor would have any problems raking hay, that's for sure. But finally, I also used the LS MT573 to bale with. Now, I am using a Heston 550, which is a four foot wide by six foot tall bale. I do run it at four feet, five and a half feet. I, I run it four feet wide. I run it five and a half feet tall. I do not go to the six foot on the baler, but it runs it fine. I mean, it does not bog, it does not bog the LS tractor down. It does not have any issues running that baler at all. Now look, running a baler behind a 73 horsepower tractor, unless the baler is rated at that horsepower is, is a job for any, any tractor. A lot of these balers are, a lot of these, Guys that are bailing hay, especially with the five by sixes, are using at least a hundred horsepower tractor. But I used the 73 horsepower and the LS MT573, and we bailed the hay. After we finished bailing, we have to load it and move it. And we've got video of that where we're loading it and moving. Again, a lot of that video is just to show you that the, the, the tractor gets the job done, and it does. And uh, it has no issues, and it worked. Uh, you know, it worked very well for us. And so I want you to take some time out and watch those videos. And uh, again, we, we are only showing you a little bit here, you know, brief moments of the tractor out working, but the tractor has, has done a very good job. And, uh, and now we're starting to, we'll be using the tractor to, to basically to feed with and, and so, so forth. Um, and, and that's just normal farm operations that we have to do. And I would like to have a hundred horsepower tractor. Uh, but in, in, in the situation we have right now with the, having to run deaf and all that, you know, I tr I'm trying to stay down to the 75 horsepower range. I took, I just want to take this moment out, show you what the tractor's done, show you the things the tractor has performed for us, how well it's worked for us. Look, we've got a 
review coming up not too far off. We're going to be talking about the LSMT 573. We're going to talk about the things that we like about it, the things we don't like about it. We have a lot more hours on it now. We're going to be able to actually give you some, you know, give you some some things that we've have found or seen on it. We may even talk about some of the comments that have come in and problems that other people have had. We're going to talk about those things as well as we're going to have to talk about uh, the the response from LS, our dealer and so forth on getting uh, the back window in. But recently I used the shredder on it and broke the back window. Okay. And so I had to buy a new back window for it. That back window is on order still. Now <clears throat> it's been about I think three weeks. And so, but now I'm hearing that there's because of the hurricane that came through, and this is an unfortunate situation, that there is some issues getting some of the parts from North Carolina. I've heard that their distribution center and their um, an assembly plant and their parts got hit up there with with the hurricane. And I don't know what that what the extent is. I don't I don't know. Uh, and so maybe somebody else does, maybe that's, maybe somebody that's up there and that has, has, is having to deal with this, have seen the, you know, there's a lot of devastation. There's a lot of, a lot of, of, of issues going on up there that, you know, is not good. Okay. And so I don't know, I don't know what the final outcome is going to finally be on this, but I will tell you that as far as right now, my LS, my MT573, you've seen the work it does. Pictures are worth a thousand words. So take, so, you know, that's all I can do. I can't, I can't magically put 6,000 hours on it and tell you this is a great tractor. I can't magically do that. We have to run the tractor. We have to see how it does. And that's what my review is about. We're going to go, as we go through this process, as you see this tractor work, you'll have a better idea. You'll be able to make a more informed choice. Hey, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate all of our subscribers. Please continue to watch and subscribe and hit the like button and, and so forth. But until next time, thanks.